Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna talk about building assemblies from the SOLIDWORKS perspective. Now, what this means is we need to understand the two basic approaches to creating assemblies inside of SOLIDWORKS. Now, there are a top-down approach and a bottom-up approach. Now, the top-down approach is where all the parts are designed in the context of a single design. Now, in SOLIDWORKS, this means that you're working in an assembly file and you're creating these internal parts that are saved inside of that assembly. A more traditional approach or a bottom-up design is when each part is designed inside of its own part file independently and brought into the assembly. Now, one of the main benefits of using Fusion is that you can choose which method you want at any point in time and actually mix and match them pretty easily. So we're gonna take a look at two designs, one that adopts the bottom-up design approach and one that adopts the top-down design approach. So first is this grill. Now this grill is using a top-down assembly design. All of the parts or components, as we call them in Fusion, are inside of this main design. But one of the benefits here is that Fusion has a single design type. It's not a part or an assembly. You can decide if you want it to be a part or an assembly by simply choosing whether or not you're creating components or just bodies inside of the design. This means all the mechanical motion and all of the features that are used to create are all located inside of this single design file. This is a huge advantage if you're working in assemblies and you want to have references across multiple components. But the other approach, and we're talking about a bottom-up design, that's where we have externally linked components. When you're looking at the browser inside of a Fusion file that has externally linked components, they'll be shown with a chain link icon. The chain link icon represents the fact that these are external components and they have a link. Now you can choose to open those components, you can take a look at the history, choose a specific version, or even break the link. Breaking the link will bring in all of the features, sketches, and all the other design elements that go along with that design and bring them into that current assembly. Now, another thing that we can do is note that some of these will have a flag icon, and the flag icon represents a milestone. Every time you save a design in Fusion, that version is saved in history, and you can go back or revert to it at any point in time. When you're looking at a design that has a milestone, this typically means that something important happened in that design history, and it was saved as a milestone for a good reason. So we can always go back to earlier designs that have certain milestones or pick a specific version. Note that this one here had over 400 versions or saves before it was completed. So with that in mind, let's also talk about the fact that we have something called edit in place. When we're looking at a design that has an external reference, a pencil icon appears on the right for edit in place. Edit in place will create assembly context that'll be stored in that design. So for example, this main casting here, that has external references because it's saved externally. If I were to start creating sketches, for example, if I create a sketch on the side plane here, and I project some reference, so let's say we use P on the keyboard, and we wanna bring in that location as a reference for something. That context is now stored inside of this design, which means that it brings in a representation of the body, and you'll notice a different icon here, which is a forward arrow representing essentially a derive. A derive is pulling out specific elements of a design, and it's saving that inside of the context of this main casting. This means when I open up that casting, I'll have an assembly context folder, and it'll let me know that we're referencing certain aspects of another design. Once again, this is a way to work in Fusion that is similar to SOLIDWORKS, creating either a top-down or a bottom-up design, but note that the process is a little bit more fluid. You can make those design decisions as you go and change your mind at any point in time. There are best practices that you should follow. For example, if you are working in a bottom-up design or a top-down design, you wanna make sure that you work with those components in a certain way and organize the timelines and features in a way that makes the rebuild much better. However, you do have the flexibility to change your mind and restructure your designs at any point in time. So one last bonus tip. We mentioned that we can mix and match modeling styles in Fusion pretty seamlessly. So in the grill case, we have all internal components. They were designed internally and built inside the context of a single design file. Now, if we were to create a new component, we have the option to save it internally or to create it externally. And if we want to create an external component in the context of an assembly, it would have a similar structure to what we saw with the nail gun. 
Now the nail gun had external components and we could use things like edit in place to have those external references captured inside of those designs. There are other ways in which we can work with Fusion. For example, if we want to insert our own external component, maybe another variation of this wheel, we can drag and drop it from our data panel and bring it into the context of our design. We can move it and position it. We can add joints however we need. And what we would be doing here is creating an external reference in the context of our design. We can see the chain link icon. And if we decide that we want this wheel to be a part of our original design, we can right click and we can break that link. When we break the link, what happens here is that all of the features that were used to create that design are gonna be brought into our current design. So in the case of a variation of a component like a wheel for this grill, we could design several versions externally, we can bring them into the model, and then we can decide if we wanna keep one of them, break the link, and it'll be as if it was designed completely within that assembly. So those are just a couple of extra tips because there are many variations and different ways in which we can do this inside of Fusion. And while we can easily mix and match these approaches, it is always best to have a good and clear understanding of your design intent before you get started, and that will help you make the best decision possible for how your design should be laid out.